Well, pay attention, boys and girls. This is very important. Make sure you listen till the end. On November 23rd, the leaders of the CSTO arrived in Yerevan, Armenia. And I'm shocked that Lukashenko, the barking dog, was even allowed to enter the country. He should go to Baku instead. His two lovers, Aliyev and Marybon, are waiting for him in bed for some dinner and Tub of lard, barking dog, keep your smelly ass out of Armenia. Sukashenko got off the plane smiling and shaking everyone's hand. Let's remember how a few weeks ago, he called Aliyev his buddy and also said that the CSTO would not protect Armenia from terrorist Azerbaijan's invasions. Clown. Putin was welcomed by both pro-Russia demonstrators as well as anti-Putin protesters. Some groups waved the Russian flags and showed support for Russia, while others shouted anti-Putin remarks. Ukrainian flags were also seen. Let's remember, Armenia has taken in thousands of new migrants from both Russia and Ukraine ever since the war between the two countries started. But the only flags that should be waved in Armenia should be red, blue, and orange. Pashinyan said that when Kazakhstan asked CSTO troops to enter his country in early January, Armenia helped immediately, but it's discouraging that the CSTO did nothing when Armenia requested CSTO assistance during the recent terrorist Azeri invasions. I'm not the biggest fan of Pashinyan, but I see no lies being said here. The CSTO has already publicly stated they won't be coming to help Armenia. What type of alliance is this? We have rat pieces of like Lukashenko saying that Azerbaijan is their friend. Sukashenko's recently been saying that Armenia is useless to the CSTO and the CSTO doesn't need Armenia. So why are you coming to Yerevan laughing and smiling while shaking everybody's hand? Aliyev the Rat this week said that Azerbaijan has more friends in the CSTO than Armenia does. And he's actually right. Let's break that down. Armenia, a CSTO member, and Azerbaijan, a terrorist state that's invading a CSTO member. And the country that's invading the CSTO member has more friends in the CSTO than the actual CSTO member. Pashinyan went on to say the refusal for assistance from the CSTO after Armenia asked for help caused great damage to the image of the CSTO and stopped short of calling the alliance a complete failure. Pashinyan also refused to sign a CSTO document stating that it did not benefit the interest of Armenia. The information in the document is yet to be revealed. We know the plan. Putin will soon give terrorist Azerbaijan and Turkey the green light to attack Armenia once again. Expect more battles very soon. Whether you're pro Nicole or not, there's no denying that the CSTO has failed Armenia. Some say the CSTO is not helping Armenia because of what Pashinyan said and done ever since he rose to power. That's not important right now. We're here now. We're fighting now. And it's no excuse for the CSTO to abandon their duties to a member country just because they don't favor the current government in charge. Our soldiers and civilians are dying by the hands of terrorist dog Azeris. On the Artsakh front, the president of Artsakh signed a decree on dismissing a number of ministers. This is due to Ruben Vartanyan's appointment as minister of state and to the formation of a new cabinet. Vartanyan will have full control of choosing the new cabinet members. Aliyev's nightmare Vartanyan is the top man in Artsakh. And Aliyev's pissing his pants. Gharapov was never Azerbaijan. And it'll never be. In recent Azeri circles, Azeris rejoiced and celebrated around a memorial post of a 9-year-old Armenian girl who was shelled and murdered by Azeris during the 2020 war. Azeris made comments such as she shouldn't have been on Azeri land and how they wished more would have died. This is the true face of Azerbaijan, the sick and twisted inbred land of sister. Listen closely boys and girls, this is very important, make sure you listen till the end. Terrorist Azerbaijan continues disrupting the peaceful Armenian community of Artsakh Nagorno-Karabakh. 
The Azeris are now targeting civilians, farmers, and agricultural workers. A farmer was targeted on Wednesday in the Ascaron region, while last week another farmer was injured in the same area. Azerbaijan claims that they were only returning fire and that the Armenian side shot first. So we're supposed to believe that farmers and agricultural workers opened fire on Azeri soldiers? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Delusional inbreds, taking a playbook from Hitler and accusing the other side of what you're guilty of. Terrorist dogs doing terrorist dog activities. Just yesterday, the Azeris also opened fire along the eastern border of Armenia and another Armenian soldier was injured. Armenia's defense ministry said that Azerbaijan opened fire at around 11 a.m. local time on Thursday. As a result of the enemy fire, an Armenian private serviceman was injured. The soldier is currently in stable condition and is being treated for his wounds. This is now the second time in one week Azeris have opened fire and injured Armenian soldiers, as well as terrorized the civilians of Artsakh nagorno karabakh Pashinyan is beginning to make certain remarks and finally showing some balls to call out this terrorist regime and make hints that a peace agreement is becoming more and more unlikely. Peace with the Azeris is not possible. Generations of inbreeding and brainwashing have turned this population into complete hateful and evil demons. They've been taught since childhood they must behead Armenians. This is 30 years of state-sponsored terrorism by Aliyev and his tranny wife Mary Bon. This is the European Union's trusted partner. The EU thinks that they're getting their gas from Azerbaijan and are doing the noble thing by not buying directly from Russia. They're only fooling the people who blindly believe these absurd claims. The EU knows exactly where their gas is coming from. Gazprom and Sokar just announced that they made a deal where Russia will provide 1 billion cubic meters of gas to Azerbaijan by March 2023. So the EU rejected Russian gas only to be able to buy Russian gas through Azerbaijan. What a great move by the EU that was. Now the ordinary citizen pays double for their gas thinking it's in the name of democracy? There is no democracy going on here. Aliyev expressed his dissatisfaction with the absence of Azerbaijan at the Forum of Ancient Civilizations to be held on December 4th in Baghdad. The forum will be attended by Armenia, Greece, China, Egypt, Iran, Italy, Peru, Bolivia, and Mexico. I don't understand what he's upset about. His artificial country is barely a hundred years old. This just shows how delusional Aliyev is. The state minister of Artsakh, Ruben Vartanyan, is the man Aliyev currently fears most. He knows that unlike Pashinyan, Vartanyan has connections to some of the most powerful and elite figures around the world. Vartanyan made his billions through business unlike Aliyev, who was handed over everything ever since childhood. Vartanyan will soon be the person in the top position in Artsakh Nagorno-Karabakh.